During World War I, there was a threat of invasion along the east coast of England. It was said that if Weybourne was overthrown, England would be conquered. Pillboxes were built along the coast to prevent this. 100 years on, most of these are now abandoned and run down, but one has recently become restored by a local historian, Ian Clark. Pillbox was constructed 1914-1915 as a defensive line linked in with other pillboxes all the way from Weybourne right down to Kent. And it worked, yeah, based on the river line of the River End in this particular area, you know, the North Walsham area from Bradfield and Swayfield. The river isn't very wide, but um, there's about eight pillboxes on that line. Here we are in Bradfield. This is the infamous World War I pillbox, which is practically uh, one of the last ones left that's intact. It was covered in ivy, which protected it. And uh, these are the armor plated doors, which would stop a bullet and just about everything else. So we've restored those. A lot of the pillboxes don't have the doors anymore. And there'd be room inside for about four or five guys. And they'd protect this whole junction here. And there is another pillbox in the woods on the other side. So you get coordinated fire. But the round pillboxes are quite rare. They're from the First World War and there's less than 24 left in the whole of Norfolk and perhaps probably in the whole of the country. So they're pretty well worth preserving and remembering what they were built for. When we met with Ian, he told us the story of one young man, typical of many, that really brought home what those years were all about, a Paston Scholar just like us. Well, the Paston Scholar was a boarder. His name was Kayla and he went to Paston with his mortarboard hat and then he became an EDP reporter in 1912 to 14. But like most young men at the time he was called up and he was called up into the Norfolk Regiment from Paston. Um, he was employed as, as I said the EDP and he started to report the war but then he joined the Norfolk Regiment, went to France, he got wounded and he was evacuated. He lost part of his arm and his eye uh, to Warley Hospital in Essex. Um, and that's where we lost track of him. We got photographs and information on him, his birth certificate, letter from the headmaster at Paston, his EDP business card, and some reports he made. And we got photographs of him at Warley Hospital. But then after that, I haven't had time to do any research. But it's an open case. Where did he go after that? Which I think is worth looking at. Did he come back to Norfolk? Did he go back to the EDP? Perhaps someone out there knows, which would be great.